Great. <clears throat> what did you do? Did Jim drink with you? No. He let he took me out on thin ice and left me standing there. <laughs> <laughs> then by take it rolling. Scary, scary, scary. Scarred me for life. <clears throat> and speed. Uh, everyone has talked about uh, making this movie, and an enormous amount of people have taken runs at it and thrown money away in the, in the project. Why you and why now? I think there are certain forces pushing in that direction. I, when they asked me to do it in 86, I said, sure, in a second. I loved the uh, music. I loved the man. I loved what he stood for. But they weren't able to get it together. I was not approved by one of the doors. Yeah. And then in 1989, it came back to me again, and this time the five different parties approved me as a director. It was tough because each party had a different interest or point of view. Still to this day they do. Yes. They'll, yeah. see the, they'll all see the movie in a different light. That's for sure. <laughs> You're prepared for audiences to be split along those lines as well? Yes. Yeah. But what was important to you was that what your vision came through. I think so. You know, I, mean, I, I followed my heart. Because it was always there for Jim. It wasn't like I had to strain for it. You know? <laughs> Is it possible to, uh, for you to uh, explain the effect that Morrison, the man in the music, had on you? Well, I think I showed it through the movie, but I guess in the 60s it would be the first time I heard it. It was so, it was so in the head. I never heard music like that. It, made, it was music that forced you to question everything around you, raise your consciousness. And you, you heard never it went back once you crossed that line. And you heard it in Vietnam? Yeah, in the infantry. I, in the same day that you were being shot at? or no, you, no, no. But uh, Motown was very popular over there, sure. as was the country western. And then when I heard rock, this kind of head rock for the first time, whoa, you know. And plus the lyrics were so clear, you know. We, we, were, we were dealing with life and death over there the same way, and Jim's lyrics were right on the money, you know. They when, were, when you came back from uh, Vietnam, um, I think it's been spoken about that... Uh, that you went through some of those same excesses? Sex, drugs, and I think rock I went world. through excesses in Vietnam, too. Did you? you know, I think we all did. Firefighters that way. Yeah, I went through a period of difficulties and coming to terms with myself or trying. It took a lot of acid. And uh, I could relate. I related to Jim. The day he died was a very sad one for me. Where were you? In New York, department store. I remember hearing it at that very moment. I was shocked, you know, to be so young. Did it surprise you? Yeah. I thought, you know, these are the kind of people you think are going to be around forever, and then one, not, one day they're not. Tell me about your final post-production, the wonderful job that Val did for you, that, uh, the character that he brought. But you had to make a decision in post-production as to who was going to sing what. When did you finally make that decision? It wasn't so difficult. It sort of like lent itself naturally, because through all the different cuts of the film, the better voices would emerge in each case. And, yep. Val carried his close-ups and his medium shots very well. Sometimes we snuck a little Jim in. We used Jim on the other shot, uh, the scenes where you don't see uh, Jim uh, Val singing. So it's a nice. Ba I, I couldn't tell the difference after a while between the two of them. Now that you know this much about Jim Morrison, because you've literally spent five years just preparing for all of this, is he the person that you thought he was? Yes, and more. Hmm. I still like him as much as when I started. I think he's a cool guy. He's pretty cool. Um, tell me about the... <clears throat> do we get a video out of this? Oh, I hope so. Oh, I, I hope mean, so. You mean a, a good video? Yeah. Well, it, I always, I'm shooting in 235, you know, which is scope. Yeah. And whenever I... On board of the fourth, I had to scan it down to a video thing, which is a shame. You lose the edges. Uh, but I'm thinking in terms of uh, those of us who play his music, uh, play the Doors music, do, and we get a soundtrack out of it as well. Yes, Electra is re-releasing the movie track on... March 1. Right. And the soundtrack is, is Jim Morrison and the Doors? Yes. Right. Uh, and how will it be marked? I mean, this is a huge marketing. These guys are as hot as they have ever been. I think they're doing very well, yeah. <laughs> um, do you still believe, as you did five years ago, in William Blake's uh, quote about the road of excess leads to the, uh, the palace of wisdom? Yes. You do? Yeah. <laughs> what does that say about you? <laughs> I think you need high contrast, you know? You gotta, you gotta get out there and test the limits. Did you find everything you wanted in this movie? I mean, did you, did you test I, all of those I limits? I enjoyed the hell out of it. Yeah. It was fun making. I loved the people that worked on it. They did it from their hearts. The extras were great in San Francisco and LA. People really turned out. 
And they were in the good spirit. They were dancing, taking off their clothes. No limits, no laws. They want to get out of uh, all the fucking law and order that we got in yeah. the 80s. They, you know, people had enough of the repression. And even, you think Jesse Helms would like this picture? <laughs> Thanks. Thank you.